I'm on the Sepik River in Papua New Guinea, fishing for paku, a relative of the piranha responsible for attacking and mutilating the genitals of fishermen. Yeah, yeah, bigger one, bigger one, bigger one. There it is. Look at that, it's really big, it's really big. This could be the one I've been looking for. I know there's snags on the bottom, so I'm trying to keep it away from that. Yeah, just see it. This black water. You can just see it down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. I need to just keep it away from stuff on the bottom, but there's also people's houses in the water. Just need to keep it away from that. At the moment, it's in open water. That's good. I'll get it well and truly tied out before I try and do anything with this one. Then I need to examine it without losing a chunk of my hand. I don't want to rush it. Right. Oh, and that, that actually, just take a look at that. As I lifted it out, that straightened the hook as I lifted it out. Oh, now this is interesting because I've just been seeing small ones of these. That is, that's a different animal from what I have been catching. This is more of a size. Ooh. So the coloration on this is actually quite different from the small ones. The small ones have a very dramatic red belly, which on this, have, you know, so that's sort of faded away to this rather light orange. But the biggest difference is, oh! gosh, very muscular fish. Just gave a bit of a kick there. This is all muscle here. So it's a very strong fish, very powerful. But um, I'm just, oh. I'm just trying to look at the business end here. Just look at that. On the small one, they were quite delicate teeth on here. I mean, those are real, cru real crushers. What this fish normally feeds on in the Amazon is seeds and nuts, and you know, they often have tough cases to be opened. So these teeth basically they're nutcrackers. This thing really does look like a giant piranha. But the teeth on this, not designed for cutting, but for crushing and tearing. Seeing those teeth reminds me of all the stories I've been told about the attacks on people. Oh. It's like human beings biting onto my leg. Those teeth really do look uncannily like human teeth. And to be bitten by those, you know, I think that would be a very creepy experience. It would be just like being bitten by a person. With some fresh roadkill on the end of my line, I've hooked my first longfin eel. Even with a small one, I have to take special care because these fish have poisonous blood. The serum contains a neurotoxin that can kill dogs and just a splash into my eye or a cut as I try to unhook it could land me in serious trouble. Doesn't feel like a normal fish at all. Very, very smooth skin. They do actually have scales, but they're embedded under a layer of skin. Not very big eyes. They don't really use their eyes to hunt, but they do use smell. And you can see what looks like a pair of horns on the front of the head there. In fact, these structures are tubes that funnel water into enlarged nasal chambers. The eel's sense of smell is even more sensitive than that of a great white shark. Having zeroed in, an eel grabs its prey with powerful jaws that bristle with hundreds of teeth. Well, you can see why people consider these to be very similar to snakes, even though they are technically fish. There are plenty of eels here, but nothing over three feet long. Leaving legends aside, I wonder if science can shed any light on the question of size. Just how big, in theory, could this animal grow? The chief and I have come out in a raging storm to check the lines, but it's worth it because we have a fish. But I've got to be especially careful in this weather. The stories I've heard are racing through my head, and I'm thankful to have the chief controlling the boat. Most fishermen here normally go out alone. I 
thought I felt something else possibly. Something moving, something moving down there. Two fish can mean double the power. So, hey, that's kicking, that's kicking. I've got to be careful, got to be careful it doesn't pull this line out and send those other hooks flying. But fortunately, it looks like they've already lost a lot of their power, struggling to get off the lines. I mean, luckily, these fish have probably been on the line for a little while. Let's get all this line well clear from me. And I can feel something else pulling. I think there's something pulling on the end of this one. There is. There's, there's a kick, definitely. I'll just get this hook sorted. There we go. Wow, how about this, how about this? Nothing, nothing, nothing. And I think it could have been the rain that, uh, well, it's quite possible it was the rain that got them going. Three nice size sunny there, three very nice size. The weather's kicking off though, I mean, it's, it's coming, it's getting worse, there's lightning. I wanna have a look at these fish, but I think, you know, priority should be get back to the village, have a good look at them there. Oh. A circle. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there is a fish on. Let me get this uh, ratchet off. Uh, the line's coming up, the line's coming up. That's another one. It's a good size one. There it is. In this part of the Nile, the goal is to land fish quickly before the crocs come looking for easy prey. It's a decent sized Nile perch and a great start to my quest for a giant. And then, uh, now, this has got an unusual capture. It actually swallowed the bait fish head first down to about here. I think it was actually this dorsal barb of the bait fish that actually stopped the bait coming out of its throat, not the hook. Let's just, oh, let's just support it maybe like that. Look at that. Let's get down. Okay. Whew, very nice fish, this. 70 pounds, something like that, but beautiful fish, lovely, beautiful coloration, very strong as well. The paddle-like tail and muscular body indicate a fish designed for power and acceleration. These fish are ambush predators, relying on their large eyes to target prey and just cavernous mouth on this thing. It just inhales its food fish whole. Ah. I've got to let this fish recover before I let it go, and that means exposing myself to a potential croc attack. But out here in the middle of the river, it's my only option. Fish on. It's a bit slack then, but the water is just moving around so much. It's actually gone into, it's actually gone in some of the water that's coming towards me. This feels a good size because it's, it's actually coming with the current. It's, it's up to like coming out of the surface, coming out to the surface. That's a good size fish. Gosh, that's a good size. This fish is actually going with the current. Ah, it's just stopped. There it is, on the top, on the top, on the top. I think the fish is tired, but there's a real weight of water behind it. It's right in the side here, it's right in the side. Right in the side. It's tired out. I can't see the fish, because there's just all that foam. Oh, 
about that? How about that? Right, I've just put a bit of heavy mono through its, uh, through its mouth. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just pull it back into the water, walk it round here into some quiet water where it can recover, where I can recover as well. I'm just hoping if there's crocs, that they'll prefer the fish to me. It's already starting to get a, a bit more strength back, but I want to make sure it's fully recovered before I have a proper look, because if it goes back in this water, not properly recovered, it's just going to get bashed, possibly to death, on these rocks. I'm going to need the help of my boat driver, Etchy, as this fish is too big to lift by myself. It's 112 pounds with the net. We've got to deduct a little bit for that, but that's well clear of 100 pounds. OK, and then up. OK. All right, this is one lump of an isle perch, well over 100 pounds, and just what an amazing setting to catch it from. Big old fish, ambush predator, great big paddle of a tail there. But at the business end, look at this, you don't have tentacles like a catfish. You've got big eyes, and then you've got this protrusible jaw. And when it actually opens that quickly, it's almost telescopic, and it just engulfs fish by creating a, a vacuum. The water just rushes in. And one other thing just to say, look at that for a defense. It's like having six-inch nails sticking out your back. Finally, I've caught the fish that shows monster Nile perch can still be found here in Africa's Rift Valley.